I'm Brittany, a cloud support engineer here at AWS office in Sydney. Today, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot HTTP 502 bad gateway errors with your application load balancer and identify the source of these errors using CloudWatch metrics and ALB access logs. Let's get started. To help you troubleshoot, use Amazon CloudWatch metrics and application load balancer access logs to identify the source of the 502 errors. After you sign into AWS Management Console, navigate to the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud Console. In the navigation pane, choose Load Balancers and then select the application load balancer that you want to troubleshoot. Next, Choose the Application Load Balancer's Monitoring tab and review the Target 5xx and ELB 502 metrics. If there are data points in the Target 5xx metrics, then the target might be returning the error. To verify that a target returned the error, check the target status code field in your application load balancer access logs. The access logs specify the target that's returning the error. If one of your targets returned the 502 error, then check your target's application. Now let's troubleshoot what causes your application load balancer to return the 502 error. One reason why your application load balancer returns the 502 error is because the load balancer can't establish a TCP three-way handshake with the target. As a result, the load balancer can't forward the client request to the target and receives a TCP RST or reset from the target. To troubleshoot this issue, Check target connection error count metric to determine the number of connections that the load balancer couldn't establish with the target. You can also compare target connection error count metric to the HTTP code ELB 502 count metric. In this example, you can see that the data points in each metric match, which confirms that the ELB 502 error occurred because the load balancer received a TCP RST from the target. In the access logs, we can see a value of minus one for the request processing time, target processing time, and response processing time fields. A value of minus one means the application load balancer can't send the request to the target. To resolve this issue, make sure that your target is listening on its registered port and its service or application is in running state. Let's check another potential reason for the 502 error. When the load balancer tries to connect to the target and receives an unexpected response from the target such as ICMP destination unreachable or host unreachable. It means that the application load balancer subnets are not allowed to the target's registered port. Similar to the previous scenario, we see a value of minus one for the request processing time, target processing time, and response processing time fields in the application load balancer access logs. Next, let's troubleshoot why the target closes the connection with the TCP RST or a TCP FIN when the load balancer has an outstanding request to the target. The load balancer receives a request and forwards the request to the target. The target starts to process the request, but closes the connection to the load balancer too early. This occurs when the duration of the keep alive timeout that you configured on the target is shorter than the idle timeout value of the load balancer. Make sure that the duration of the keep alive timeout is longer than the idle timeout value. Now let's troubleshoot the malformed target response and the targets that contain HTTP headers that aren't valid. 
To check for malformed or invalid headers, perform a packet capture on the target for the time frame of the issue. In the access logs, we see a value of 0, 0 and minus 1 in request processing time, target processing time and response processing time fields respectively. Next, let's resolve the SSL handshake error when it connects to the target. The TCP connection from your load balancer to the target's HTTPS listener is successful, but the subsequent SSL handshake encounters an error. To help you troubleshoot, check for data points in the target TLS negotiation error count metric. You can also perform a packet capture on the target for the time frame of the issue to find details about SSL handshake error between application load balancer and the target. To resolve this issue, make sure that your target is using a TLS cipher suit that your application load balancer's security policy supports for backend connections. Now let me show you how to resolve a deregistration delay period that's passed for a request that a registered target manages. In your AWS CloudTrail events, check for the deregistered target's API action during the time frame of the issue. If the target deregistered too early, then an HTTP 502 error occurs. To resolve the issue, Increase the deregistration delay period in your target group attributes so that lengthy operations can complete. And finally, to troubleshoot HTTP 502 errors when the target is an AWS Lambda function, check the Lambda error reason codes in the error reason field of the load balancer's access logs. Use the error reason code to determine what caused the HTTP 502 errors. So now you know how to troubleshoot HTTP 502 bad gateway errors with your application load balancer. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.